I spoke to retailers, factory reps, and a few Levinson and Klein employees, past and present. I asked a number of you here tonight to explain to me why Levinson and Klein was the dominant furniture store in Baltimore. Why this store does twice and even three times the volume of its nearest competitors. What's behind its mystique, its magic, its image in the furniture marketplace? One person explained the store's success by saying it's a one-price store. Another said they carry their own paper. Still another cited family loyalty of its customers. Credibility was the answer of a man I hold in high regard both locally and on a national level. But before I attempt to find a comprehensive answer, let me tell you how this remarkable business began. In 1919, Woodrow Wilson was president. Women's suffrage for women's right to vote was just started. Prohibition had not yet gone into effect. William Broning served as Baltimore's mayor and Reuben Levinson, his brother-in-law Joseph Klein and Joseph's father Morris were creating a business that would thrive and feed their families for more than 70 years. Joseph and Reuben started Levinson and Klein by purchasing a building for $15,000 with a mortgage of $3,000. They borrowed $5,000 from Morris, Joseph's father, and the rest came from their own pockets. Little did they know the business they started would grow to employ 500, have a fleet of 30 delivery trucks, and become a household name and a destination spot to the citizens of Baltimore. The first storefront was in a corner row house on the corner of Fayette and Washington Streets. Reuben had worked as a manager for Blum's on Gay Street. When Levinson and Klein first opened, Reuben worked days at Blum's and nights at the new store. It wasn't too long, though, before Levinson and Klein prospered and Reuben said goodbye to Blum's and worked full-time at Levinson and Klein. In the beginning, Reuben and Joe did everything from sell to deliver. Through a lot of hard work and smart marketing, the business was successful. Within five years, Morris's loan had been repaid and he left the business. In 1924, the business was officially incorporated. In 1935, the business had outgrown the small corner townhouse and moved to its new location on Monument and Chester Street. This was a former residence of the Haman Slaughterhouse. The location was perfect and the business thrived. During holidays, window decorations were paramount and attracted theater goers as they came and left what was then the famous State Theater. The State was the only theater in Baltimore that featured vaudeville acts and for just a dime for adults and a nickel per child, matinees were packed with customers who would spill into and cross the street to shop Levinson and Klein. This, too, was a popular intersection for German, Czech, Italian, and Polish shoppers to gather at what was a busy shopping area in Baltimore. When a customer wandered into the showroom, they were greeted by the sound of birds chirping and singing. Cages were hung along the main aisle of the store, probably a first in the business of retail. At the time, not everyone owned a car, and if they did, they owned just one. So delivery was extremely important to the success of the store. Soon a fleet of 30 delivery trucks as well as an in-house mechanic were a part of the Levinson and Klein family. World War II brought changes to everyone in Baltimore and so it did to the busy furniture store. A young part-time employee, William Levinson, would join the Navy, leaving Reuben and Joseph to run the store. In 1946, the war ended and young William became a full-time employee. He learned the business from the ground up. Thirteen years later, in 1959, the Kleins were bought out of the business. William and Reuben ran the store. William functioned as the store's merchandising, advertising, and daily operation, and Reuben's primary function was not unsimilar to his role at Blum's. He operated the financial end of the business, credit, and collections. The store provided for easy purchasing by providing financing to their customers. Levinson and Klein was extremely proud of the fact that they were the first major retail store of their kind in Baltimore to provide financing to African Americans. They were also a regular ad buyer for the Baltimore Afro-American. 
As business grew and people started to move to the suburbs in 1964, a second location was added on the corner of Route 40 and Rolling Road in Catonsville. Still growing, in 1973, a third location opened at 8645 Pulaski Highway across from what was the new Golden Ring Mall. The new store location was directly across the street from the mall, and a traffic light that would ensure easy access for shoppers to travel unencumbered from the mall to the new store was not in the plans. This meant shoppers would have to cross a very busy intersection to get to the new store. The architect's firm no to the new stoplight turned into a yes after some well-orchestrated conversations. Rubin ensured that the traffic light that is still there to this day served both the mall and Levinson and Klein entrances. In the 1970s, unions attempted but failed to unionize the truck drivers and the sales staff. Neither attempt would ever happen. The reason in part was that this was a big corporate family. Personal problems were routinely discussed directly with William. An open-door policy ensured any of the nearly 500 employees could see William if they needed to see him. Personal loans were not uncommon, even if some of the requests were. On one occasion, a long-time employee asked for a loan to purchase a set of teeth for his spouse as she was about to start a new job. Weddings, birthdays, and anniversaries were weekly events, and all were graciously attended whenever possible. Through very sharp marketing using television, print, and radio, the business would continue to grow. Levinson and Klein offered a new concept of being a sales floor and warehouse all under one roof. In addition to the new warehouse facility, two standalone warehouses on Biddle Street and Urban Avenue in Baltimore were part of the L&K real estate. In-house was the rule of the day. Draperies, custom window and door installations and sales, washers, dryers, linens, carpeting, including installation, and kitchen appliances, TV, stereos, outdoor furniture, and even free home decorating services. L&K even had its own mini post office on the property where flyers that were printed elsewhere were stuffed into envelopes. Machinery would print and apply mailing labels and postage for each flyer for each of its 10 10,000 customers to receive in their homes. Levinson and Klein prospered, and to keep up with the demand, it added an in-house service department, which included an upholsterer and a wood shop to make repairs as needed and the customers happy. To generate customer loyalty and to say a special thank you to its customers, L&K would have a customer appreciation night at each of its stores a few times a year. Invited by personal invitation, the customer would be treated to a night of live music with refreshments and local celebrities and even get their autographs. The customer would be greeted at the front door by Reuben and or William Levinson dressed in tuxedos with their wives by their sides in evening gowns. This was a big deal for the customer. Attendance would be high and they would show up in their finest attire and eat and dance the night away. Each of the stores had a community room. The public could use the room for small events like baby showers, card groups, even musical groups use the community room. In addition to being a convenience to the general public, it also helped increase store traffic. The business had grown from two young men with a delivery truck to a bustling four to five hundred employee enterprise. A full-time mechanic watched over the fleet of 30 trucks. Mrs. Suman was William's secretary a small, quiet lady by nature whose life was built around seeing Levinson and Klein ran smoothly. Mr. Dineline, the store manager, made sure everyone did their job and every customer was treated as if they were number one. Franklin Pitts, Robert Moeller, Nuncio Prestiani, and Mr. Wahlberger all were lifetime employees who grew their departments to be the best in the business, and each was an integral part of the Levinson and Klein story. A generational employees were not merely uncommon, they were numerous. Many of these children who started out doing small tasks would work their way up to become important parts of the Levinson and Klein family. 
In the 1980s, with the passing of Reuben Levinson, it became apparent to William that the business needed some new energy. And he sold the majority of the business to Bessemeyer Securities, who held it for a short time until they eventually sold it to Pfizer Company. In the 1990s, under the ownership of the Pfizer Company, the doors to this great institution of Maryland closed forever. Discover the new Levinson and Klein. Our own instant credit program lets you enjoy your purchase immediately. Let us customize a credit plan for you as you discover all of our beautiful styles and these amazing values. Fabulous sit, sleep, and recline sofas by Catnapper. You get the recliner section, the curved corner section, and the full-size sleeper section, all for just $12.99 now. Be sure to see all of our tremendous price reductions now as you discover the new Levinson and Klein. We've always been there. We always will.